There was something that kept her in that cellar. No ropes, no zip ties, just unseen earwigs, camel crickets, and a faint smell of earth beneath the concrete. She couldn't move. Bound only by her fear, she sat motionless, sinking in her self-prepared quicksand heart. Anger and bitterness filled her belly, leaving no room for dessert. She hated cake anyway. It tasted too much like yellow five and battery acid. The sugary sweetness always zipped and zapped through her veins like lightning that can never find ground. Till as fate would have it, she met herself inside herself and they exchanged warm tones and starry smiles. She remembered herself as a young girl the explorer who made treasure maps to sacred objects she'd buried in tin cans under large root structures. The dreamer who took her to other worlds far beyond this one and into dimensions only she could travel to. She remembered herself as a mathematician who loved chess and thought all the world was made of geometry. She then remembered herself as a budding woman, the flirt who liked the attention a little too much friend who would always be there if you needed her, the daughter who trusted her father implicitly and always thought she'd find a lover one day who'd be just like him, only better. Then she remembered herself as the rebellious teenager, the, sele <laughs> the selection, ugh. the sexually confused and guilt-ridden girl who loved both her friends Aaron and Aaron in equal doses, the distracted student who couldn't find a good reason to complete the homework assignments given to her by teachers who were only trying as hard as the system was paying them to. She remembered herself as the rape victim of her father. She remembered when, how, why it happened. It was on the first weekend she went to visit him alone after her mother and her father got their divorce papers signed and finalized. They cried together. They talked with each other, screamed at one another, stained reflections. She held herself close and one assured the other that everything was going to be okay. That it has to be. That one day the pain will subside and it will all just feel like a dream. A ride, a roller coaster with dips and dives and slips and slides and all she can think about is the slipping and sliding of her father in and out of her body like some indefatigable machine pumping oil and pain and blood up from the bowels of the earth. And she cried harder, sobs that only her higher self could console, and it was then that she told herself which direction to go. She said, go south, my love, then west, and where the rivers meet the hot sands, make a home. She'll find your happiness there in a portal to a softer place. <laughs>